Today, I'm gonna to be making cornbread, but we have a special treat for you because this cornbread that we're making today, we're gonna to be making with our brand new uh, Wonder Mill Junior Deluxe that we just got in from Pleasant Hill Grains. And we're gonna be using wheat and corn that we grew right here in our backyard. All right, so let's get right in here. We're gonna open this box up and see what we got. So, we actually have been looking for a manual grain mill. We, we looked at uh, a number of different mills and quite honestly, just finding one that was available was very difficult. So, we ended up settling on the Wonder Mill Junior Hand Mill without any of the extras just because it, first of all, it was available, it was immediately available. It came available, I wanna say about six weeks ago we purchased it and they shipped it out right away. We had ordered a mock mill electric uh, some time ago, but that's not actually coming in, if at all, until the end of May. So we're kind of holding our breath on that one. But this was immediately available. Some of the other ones, um, Country Mills, uh, there was a fancy one out of uh, Europe that we were looking at. Just nothing's been available. So. This one we thought uh, would be something good. It got good reviews and it was sort of moderate. I wanna say it's about 300 bucks, maybe a little bit less. So um, I'll go ahead and take the box in, we'll put it together and then we'll come back. Okay, we have the Wonder Mill Junior here set up. Uh, I've zoomed in so you can see the action on the grinding as we get it going. This isn't really a how-to video, it's just sort of showing you what we're using and what we're doing. Um, we may do a full review uh, on this model at a different time, but right now we're just using it to make the cornbread because that's what this that's what this movie is. This one is going to be Jake makes cornbread. So we have a cup of Stoll's Evergreen here. This is a, a white uh, corn that we grew. It's a an heirloom variety, and we grew this in 2020. And we have a lot of it uh, vacuum bagged in uh, mylar bags in our garage. So we're going to go ahead and try this. We're going to use this to make our cornbread today. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this in. And then we're gonna adjust it, and then we're gonna go ahead and grind some, some cornmeal. So the way you use this grinder is you're supposed to keep the burr out just enough so that you can adjust it and get the get the grind that you want. So you do the fine grind, you do the, the, the fine adjustment so that the the wheels are gonna be big enough to actually catch that corn and grind it, and then you lock it in with this adjustment knob. So we're gonna go ahead and grind it and see what we can get. All right, here we go. Okay, so that's a, that's a really um, that's a really coarse grind. So we're going to tighten this down a little bit. Okay, be forewarned, this is a pretty loud process. So we're going to go ahead and grind some cornmeal, and I'll show you what we got. And I have to say, it takes a little bit of muscle to keep this going. It only grinds in one direction, but um, once you get it going, you know. It'll seize up if you have the stones too tightly together. So you just want to see, you know, what you what you're getting a good fine meal out of, and depending on how fine you want to go. So cornmeal is usually a little coarser than flour, but you know, I'm gonna get this a little more coarse so that I don't just have grits here. So let's do a little more grinding. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that here in the bowl. Um, you know, we have a Pretty decent corn flour in there. There's there's some gritty stuff, but I can actually run it back through again, and it should uh, pick up anything that's this left. But let's go ahead and grind the rest of this, and then we'll come back and show you what we got. We finished the cornmeal. Now we're going to go ahead and make some wheat flour. This again is wheat that we grew uh, ourselves here in our backyard. This is red fife wheat. It's a really nice clean grain. Uh, we were able to get all this harvested and winnowed and and all that and we're just going to go ahead and, and give it a try. Now this is going to be a little uh, different than the corn because the corn was a much denser or much larger kernel so we're going to go ahead and you know wind this down a little bit or tighten it down a little bit so we get a little finer flour here and we'll see how it goes with this. We're almost there. So now that we're done grinding all that 
cornmeal and, and flour, we're going to go ahead and make the cornbread. And just to show you what I've got here, this is our bowl of whole wheat flour from our own red fife wheat grown right here. Uh, I keep saying that because I'm really kind of astounded that we've gotten to this point. You know, we're finally able to mill and use uh, what we've actually grown. <clears throat> and I have to be honest, this took about a half hour. This is the first time we used the Wonder Mill Junior, uh, but it took about a half hour to get about four cups of, of cornmeal and, and flour. So it, it wasn't easy. I certainly got a workout from it, but I was able to do it and I could see the different, uh, uh, you know, just the different benefits of it. So we'll, we'll keep using it. We have, a, we have a mock mill coming, an electric mock mill, so that might help speed things up for the bulky stuff. But, you know, for being able to do this without electricity and, you know, do it at home, we're excited. A pretty straightforward recipe. The, um, the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients get thrown together and mixed, and, you know, then you go from there. So we're going to start with one cup of the corn cornmeal. One cup of cornmeal, throw that right in there. And it's a one to one ratio with the whole wheat flour. So there we have one cup of that. Then you have one tablespoon of baking powder. We use the Rumford aluminum free. It's in the red can. Um, you know, it does a great job for us and it doesn't have the aluminum, aluminum phosphate. So one tablespoon of that goes right in there. Next thing you do is you have one teaspoon of salt. We use sea salt or Himalayan salt, whatever good stuff. Uh, we don't have Redmond salt, but we're, we're going to be buying that soon. So one teaspoon of salt goes in there. That's just the dry ingredients. Then we're going to do one quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda. And we like just the plain, um, plain batter a lot of times. Some people add spices and things to it and you can, but uh, we're, we're not going to do that today. So we're just going to do a plain batter. We'll add in some, some wet ingredients. We'll put in some uh, sweet chili peppers. So let me show you how, what we're going to do. So we have two cups of buttermilk here. The little trick that I use for making quote unquote buttermilk is I do one tablespoon of citrus juice, lime juice, or lemon juice to one cup of uh, milk. So we have two cups of milk here, two tablespoons of lemon juice. You let that sizzle and sizzle, sit and curdle a little bit and just mix that and it, it actually makes it taste very similar and has the same sort of consistency as buttermilk. So, you know, if you, if you don't have buttermilk and you need a pinch, we'll do that. So we'll go ahead and pour our milk in here there. Then we have two eggs, any eggs. If you, we, we didn't grow these eggs at home. They're just eggs from the store. I think we got these ones from Costco and we're going to put those in there and we're just going to whisk it. So I think I have a, a whisk here. So you just whisk your wet ingredients and off you go. Now, the key to any good cornbread is the way you make it, and especially with cast iron. You know, first thing we do is we put our stick of butter in here, and we're going to go ahead and put this in the oven, let it melt, and then we'll keep making it. We have this set for 450. It's preheating. Went ahead and put the pot and the butter in there, and we're going to let that get nice and hot so that we can actually immediately put the butter in with our wet ingredients mix up the batter and put it right back in the pan and stick it in. That's the way you get a nice crispy cornbread. So we'll come back when that's ready. So our pan is preheated and our butter is ready. We're gonna go ahead and pull that out. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do there. All right, so we've gone ahead and we've melted the butter in the pan. And I don't know if you can hear the sizzling, but I've got some piping hot potter, uh, butter here. So what you do is you go ahead and you stir and you pour the butter into your wet ingredients. And then you mix. And I have a can here of uh, sweet green chilies. We're going to go ahead and put those in there too. We're going to mix those. So those are our wet, our wet ingredients. We're going to go ahead and pop the pan back in the oven just so it stays hot. And while we do that, we're going to go ahead and mix our cornbread ingredients all together. Just go ahead and pour this in. 
wet ingredients right in the dry ingredients. And then you go ahead and whisk. And you know, I've left some extra cornmeal and flour here on the counter because sometimes when you mix your cornbread together, it's a little too wet or it's a little too dry. This corn, this uh, cornbread batter is actually looking a little wet. So, you know, you, you can see here, it's, it's not leaving any sort of thickness. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add a little bit more of both in both ratios. A little bit more cornmeal, maybe a eh, quarter cup, eighth of a cup, same amount of flour back in. I'm gonna mix that and hopefully that'll thicken up because you want, you want something thicker than pancake batter, but not too thick. So we're gonna go ahead and keep stirring this. It's getting there, still really runny though. Again, this is, this is a new experiment because we did everything um, from our own stuff. So we, we have to adjust it for, away from sort of store-bought ingredients. Go ahead and mix that some more. Let's see what we got. I'm, I'm liking the consistency on this. I'll show this to you in a second. This is more of a whiskey looking, thicker, chunkier batter. Gonna mix that really well until we get a nice good consistency. And, and what I do is I just sort of scoop it to see if it's more clumpy rather than drippy. You know, I'm almost happy with that. Now, obviously recipes are meant to be followed generally, but as anyone will tell you, these cornbread recipes vary from family to family to family. So this is just what I like. And if it means you have to change the cooking time or something like that, you know, it's no, it's no big deal. Cornbread's an art form. As long as you, you use the major, uh, major steps, get the major ingredients and use the proper uh, pans, we're gonna go ahead uh, and check on our pan. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and get our pan out. It's been in the oven a little longer. This is our cast iron cook pan. All right, now what you're gonna hear is you're gonna hear that corn cornbread batter hitting that pan, and that's what you should hear. That's nice and hot. So you get that scooped in there as quick as you can. You can hear that sizzling already. I'll go ahead and show that. Hopefully you can see that, it's very hot, I gotta be careful. All right, so there you go. It's in the pan, right in the oven. And I think I said 450 earlier, it's actually 425. So we're gonna put that in the oven. We're gonna set the timer for 35 minutes. One, two, 30, one, two, three, four, five. 35 minutes, and we'll come back. Okay, so the cornbread's done. We're gonna go ahead and pull the cornbread out. And we're also gonna pull out the uh, apple crisp that my wife made. She made a delicious apple crisp from scratch. We're gonna go ahead and pull that out. That's been in the oven heating up. Maybe she'll do uh, uh, a video on that in the future so you can see how to do that. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull this cornbread out. And we're gonna go from there. Let's see how it looks. All right, so first let me get the apple crisp out. Oh yeah, doesn't that look good? All right, let me go ahead and put this on the table. Keep it out of the way. And then we're gonna pull that delicious looking cornbread out. Doesn't that look good? Oh yeah, look at that. So we pulled our cornbread out, it's in the pan. This, is, this was a well-seasoned pan with lots of butter in it. So we're actually, we're actually just gonna do the old flip it over and pop it out trick, so. See how it works. Oh yeah, look at that. And then, it's a little hot, but we're gonna grab it, pop it over. So we're gonna go ahead and cut into this. I have had cornbreads not set in the middle before, but not, not with a small recipe. I see a little bit of batter here. Let's see how this, I don't know, this looks like pretty good. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to zap this a little more. No, actually, that, that looks fine. It's a little crumbly. Again, this is from our own corn, so this is a, an experiment. And a tasty one, I hope. 
go ahead and cut that up. So let's pop this off. All right, show the camera what we got here. Woo, this is hot. Fresh out of the oven, look at that. Look at that, steaming cornbread. That's gonna be just delicious. This is our delicious looking cornbread. Obviously it's, it's falling up a little bit because I cut it, but you know, this is gonna go right on the plates and we're gonna eat it, so. This is our fresh homemade cornbread from wheat and corn that we grew right here in our backyard. So thanks for watching. Uh, that was our cornbread. It was a really amazing feeling to be able to say that we grew the wheat, we grew the corn, and, and practically everything that went into this uh, uh, cornbread was just something we did right here in our own backyard. So we're just trying to show you that you can homestead where you are, even if it's a suburban suburban house with a you know, patch of grass in the backyard. You can tear that up and turn it into a garden and even grow things like corn and wheat and all the things that you would need, uh, not in huge quantities, mind you, but you know, it's, it's, it's just an amazing feeling to be able to say, you know, I grew that and you know, I, I grew that and I fed it to my family, ground it up and used a recipe and, and it, it was just really great. So I appreciate you watching. Please subscribe, uh, like if you like this video and keep an eye out for more great videos from the Roaming Homesteaders. Take care.